In this video, we're going to be taking a look at colouring and putting some texture into our concept art, starting with the thumbnail sketch that we finished off yesterday. So we can get rid of essentially these thumbnails here. We want to keep these for display in our portfolio, but we don't need to show these right now. We've arrived at the shape that we want to use. And the first thing I'm going to do with that shape is make a duplicate of it. So I'm going to right click on the layer and I'm going to go to um, duplicate layer which you can see just at the top of your menu here, duplicate layer. And I'm going to call this um, concept art. I'm going to hide the original. I'm going to name that original concept. Cool. And then I can hide that. Great. So make sure your layers are all named so you can keep track of what you're working on. Control and T, and that brings up our free transform menu. That's Control and T. And then I can drag that up to make it a bit bigger on my screen so I can see what I'm working on. Sometimes whenever you resize your image, it will get a wee bit fuzzy. So you may want to paint or edit around the edges using the lasso tools. But for our purposes, you see if I edit that, it will get nice and sharp. I'm just going to delete the edge. Now, that's the first thing that we're coming up with here. Could not complete your request because a smart object is not directly editable. So what we'll need to do is go in, right click this, which we made a smart object. Again, that means it resizes um, and it maintains the original uh, resolution it had. I'm going to go to rasterize layer, rasterize layer to change it back into pixel data. Okay, and now I can paint on this, I can make selections, I can do whatever I want. When choosing a color palette, it's good to review your original references. Remember our references are kept in a little tab here, and that was for our sketch and some um, parts of our mood board that we liked particularly well. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hide the sketch because all I want to see right now is some color ideas. So looking at my references here, I'm particularly drawn to the orange tones, which you can already see in my shape designs, um, and the blues and greens of this image here. You can see some of that in this image and this image. That was kind of what I was really focusing on um, as much as I took shapes from these images, I also kind of like the color design. I'm not so much feeling the purples of this. It looks more Halloween-y. You can see that in here and here as well. So I want a color palette that limits me to um, a kind of blue-orange complementary um, color scheme. Let's take a look online and see what we can find. So when I open Chrome here, that's just a little excerpt from my uh, Pinterest board, which I already have in my Photoshop document. Handy thing is, if you want to take a screenshot of this, what you can do is just minimize that and squish it up and then you can get a, a, a good little uh, sized capture from that rather than having uh, them all spread out like this. Now, hopefully your mood board is larger than mine. I've just done a bare bones one for the purposes of this tutorial. So first thing I've googled is color palette. Trying to look for some uh, color palettes you see there are options here. There's Adobe Color. I'll open that in a separate tab. There's uh, Coolers. I'll open that in a separate tab. There's Color Hunt here. There's all sorts of color palette generators. So I could go down through these and you see I can generate palettes. So an, a complementary scheme would be using, let's see, you can actually choose complementary here in the Adobe one. So really I'm using this kind of like hot orange and like a cool uh, blue complementary. So I could edit a complementary here, but I want to get some of those green tones in as well. So what I may be doing then is a split complementary using uh, blue is my main and then you see green and orange there. So it's like a purpley blue. So I could go into doing that and that tone Let's see, there, those tones there are looking pretty good to me. You can also edit the intensity by drawing into the center. So that's the Adobe color wheel. It's really good. You can see you can select your different color types, your different scheme types from this menu here. Really, really good way of generating all of these tones. Colors here, same sort of idea. There's a generator here you can use to generate colors. It gives you a tutorial that tells you how to do that. And then you can go through and you can look at the colors. Another thing that you can do is explore other people's color palettes and you see some of their schemes have even more than five colors which is good if you're using a lot of uh, gradients. Now I've taken a look through here and I don't see a whole lot th that are very similar to what I want. Uh, anything with orange on it tends to use these um, desaturated blues and I really want more options with blues and a bit of green in there as well. So this was a wee bit limiting for me so I'm going to exit that and the color wheel for now. Color hunt just another option there for choosing colors. So what I've done is in Google image search I've typed in blue orange palettes and here I find this interesting wheel in the bottom right. So when I click on that, there's a palette wheel here. This is not a color wheel. It doesn't have all the colors in it. There's no purple. There's uh, no bright greens or anything like that. So this is really the limit of colors that I want. I want these blues. I want these greens. And then I want to get some of these hot kind of orange colors here. Probably not the yellows, but we'll see. That could be used as an accent color maybe. I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy the image that I want to take colors from. And then I'm going to return to Photoshop and just control and V to paste in that color wheel. I'm going to use my move tool in the top left here um, 
to move this wheel just up into the left hand side. It doesn't need to be this big for me to select colors from, so I'm gonna use Control T to change the size and I'm gonna drag that down into the corner just so it's big enough for me to get a read on and use. Finally, I'm going to make this a reference layer by using the lock menu here. Now we're gonna be using this quite a bit in this tutorial. So lock all will make sure that I can't do anything to this. If I select a brush with B and I click, you could not use a brush tool because the layer is locked. So because you're locking a whole layer, it's in the layers menu here. So you'll see it under the layers tab and it's a little lock icon. The way we want to start coloring this concept art is if you see, if I start to paint as is, I'm gonna be painting all over the lines. It's essentially gonna make the shapes that I've already drawn useless. I want to preserve those shapes. And one way that I can do that is by locking the transparent pixels around what I've drawn here so that I can't paint onto them. And to do that in your lock menu here, you see lock transparent pixels. I'm gonna click on that with my layer selected and that will not allow me to paint outside of the lines, which will be super helpful for taking this on to the next step. Now the next thing I have to do is choose what regions the different colors are, are going to apply to. So to do that, I can use Alt to select a color. Alt just is a shortcut for selecting my color picker tool. You can also use I for the eyedropper and that will allow you to do exactly the same thing. So I or Alt will select your color picker there. Yours may look like a little dropper icon. Mine looks like a target and that's fine. You see, as I click these, it's changing the color up in the top right tab and, and down in the bottom of my brushes there. If I wanted a really bold color scheme, I could just go ahead and grab a color, use my brush B, and I could start brushing as is with the hard round brush. If I wanted a more subtle color scheme, what I could do is use a softer round brush and change the opacity down so that I get a more painterly quality. So I can ever change my opacity down like this and then select my soft round brush. I'm gonna make it bigger using the close square bracket tool. And you see there, I can start to add shading and things to my uh, brush as I go. So I can start to uh, build up colors that way. This is a great way of adding a painterly effect and adding lighting. So this looks kind of like the bottom of my scene is lit up red with the lava that might be inside this well, which is kind of the effect that I want to go for in this. You see then I can use Alt to select an orange and I can gradate this into an orangey tone. Uh, I could even use a yellow if I wanted a really hot yellow color, say on the end of this. The more times I press my brush down, the more it will paint whenever I have my opacity turned down like this. If you have a Wacom tablet, you will also be able to dial your opacity up to 100% and then use this little button here, which allows you to set pressure for opacity. So that will allow me to draw a very light or very heavy color, depending on how hard I lean on my tablet. So I'm gonna use Control Z just to undo what I've just done with that yellow there. And at the moment I'm fine with this. Anytime I need to undo that, I can always just grab a hard round brush and that original blue that I had drawn down and I could paint in over the top of it again and start all over again. Or I could create a copy of the original layer and I could just start again. So don't ever feel like you can't go back or you can't start from scratch again whenever you already have the original concept just sitting there. Now the next tool I'm gonna to show you or use of a tool you already know is that using the lasso tool to select areas you're going to paint. This completely changed the way I looked at creating concept art in Photoshop. What you can do is if I wanted to paint in, say, like these kind of like greeny colors, I can actually select colors directly from my reference there. These greeny colors on top of the house there, or these greeny colors here that are kind of like around the grass. And um, I could try and say paint that onto this uh, headstone here, or I could try and paint it onto the grass. And it's going to go over everything else that's in the scene, which is not ideal, because then whenever I want to go and paint the uh, well here, say, I start painting, it's going to start painting over the grass. So how do we avoid the issue of painting over everything at once? What we could do is we could split up this um, art into different layers and then we could just lock down the transparency of the original layers. But I'm gonna work on this one layer just to show you how simple this can be. So if I select the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool, but I'm gonna go with the lasso tool to be able to draw freely. Let's look at this little rock here. Okay, say I want to paint this rock. I can just paint the lasso tool around that selection. Okay, so I've just selected that stone. Then I'm gonna use my brush tool I'm going to choose the soft round brush here and I'm going to paint first of all like a kind of greeny blue color here for this rock. Okay that's quite bright so I'm going to cool that down with my cool kind of blue color. All right so that's already starting to look like 
um, something. It's kind of a cool color for the, the rocks. I know rocks aren't usually green, but I'm going with this creepy kind of lighting effect that I've got going on here. All right, so then Control D and I will deselect that. And you'll see I have just that stone painted up. And then I'm going to use L and I can select the next stone. So here's a rock that's kind of like sticking up out of the ground here. And you don't need to be too um, precise with this to get an impression of where the colors are going to go. I'm now color picking directly using Alt from my what I've already done before. I'm going to put that blue there. I'm going to put this green on top here. Control D to deselect. And I'm going to use L, my lasso tool, to select another stone. And you can see how you can go about doing this over and over again. And you can start to uh, build up um, a scene based on that. So at the moment, I'm just trying to get the bold colors down to give an idea of what my scene is going to look like. So I'll finish that off with some of these details now. I've already indicated things like shading on these shapes. That's not necessary at this stage. If you want to just block off where your colors are, you can use either the lasso or let's use the polygonal lasso tool here. And what we can do is just block off areas of color. So say this stone here could, if I just click around it, I could grab that, I could grab a hard round brush then I could choose a color that I want the stone to be, and I could just paint that stone in that color. Okay, so it could be as simple as that. The grass here, I could select around the grass, the grass, sorry, the grass, and that's a wee bit trickier because I've got so many objects sitting on it. So you just have to be patient in clicking and making your selections here. I'm gonna do some zigzags to make this look like grass. Okay, you don't need to be too neat whenever you're going outside of the lines because it won't allow you to paint there anyway. And then I'm gonna use my hard round brush to just paint in that color there so that color is too similar to this you see so if you want to do some fine adjustments on your um your color box up here your color square that's absolutely fine or i could choose another color and you can do variations of color by selecting different options on the um, maybe this as it is doesn't give you the range of colors you really need so i can use that tone of green but i can make it darker or lighter depending on what i want here okay so if you want to just block out you know bits of color like that that's absolutely fine you don't need to do advanced shading i just want to get an indication of where the colors are going to go in your composition to make it feel like it is designed rather than just random colors all over the place so often what helps is if you limit yourself in a color palette which is what i have done here with these greens and oranges and blues now it's about the time to consider that the background of your model is not going to be bright white unless that works for the scheme that you're going for and uh, maybe it does and that's fine um, you're generally going to have some sort of other background color on there that won't be straight white, straight up white or black. Um, so what I can do is I can mimic that by creating a new layer. I'm going to drag it behind it. I'm going to call that background. And then I can try and find a color that's going to work. What I'm going to do is rather than using my paint bucket tool G to fill in the entire background with a color, um, I'm going to use my brush tool just to brush in a color behind the image. You'll see a lot of concept artists um, doing this. So I'm just selecting my soft round brush there and you see I can add a color in there. Now I don't want that really, really bright color. What I'm gonna do is select something more like this blue and I don't want it competing against the other blues in the scene. So I'm gonna make it a more gray blue by coming over to my uh, color square in the top right here. And I'm gonna drag the uh, little color indicator down until it's more of a kind of like mid gray blue sort of tone. And there, that's something that will kind of like more better mimic the mood of my drawing um, and show a wee bit of context to the background. I'm going to make it go even darker in this gray blue just around the center here and it will really help some of those colors and things to pop against it. And then I'll maybe try and get a, a background that looks something like that. You could if you wanted to. You see there's clouds and things there. If I really wanted to get a bit fancier I could start painting things like clouds into my image using that the um, soft round brush and you see I could add some clouds in here and keep it fairly light and not detailed whenever it's in the background of your image because you don't want it to take away from the image you see already there the light tone of that is starting to obscure some of the details so be careful with your background make sure you can actually see the details of your model over the top of those things the purpose of the background is not to be really really um, detailed and show your skills so much as it is to show off the model so in areas where say I've got this light hand here I put a darker color behind it for that to pop out in areas where I've got this dark hand here I could use a lighter color behind it to help it the pop out so think about um the ways that you can make your art communicate better uh, and be seen better 
not just how to make it look prettier. So there's some tips for um, the background that you're going to maybe paint into your concept art. If you don't have a, a background or if you just use a block color, then that is absolutely fine uh, too. Sometimes a background will help, sometimes it won't. If this background's a bit too overpowering, what I can do is go up to the layer opacity here and I can pull the opacity back on that. So I can just sort of indicate a background and maybe that will help if I go Control Z to go back in history and then Control Shift Z to go forward in history. And you see it probably looks better without the really dark clouds. So I'm just gonna leave a little indication of some background in there just to help with the theme and atmosphere of the concept art. Finally, what I'm gonna consider on this piece of concept art is the texture involved. So whenever I look at this, what I assume is dirt or rock here, I mean, I assume that it could be anything. For someone looking at this art, you need a little more to tell them about what it is. Is this ground bare earth or is it grass? Is this uh, rock? Is it dirt? What is it that we're seeing under here? Is this lava that's dripping from here or is it simply warmed up or uh, underlit earth or rock? What kind of material are these things made out of? Are these tentacles that are living material or are these uh, some sort of obelisks made of stone? Um, all of that really needs to be answered in your concept art. So without illustrating all of that, we can indicate some of the textures that should be in our completed model. If you want a very painterly look to your model, if you want your model to look hand painted, then perhaps the best way of doing this is by going in with a brush and say drawing in things like the uh, individual bricks and stones and things like that. If I get a darker brush here, you see I could maybe indicate that there are bricks in here. Without doing too many of them, I could just sort of like indicate a few bricks and bits and pieces that would be, you know, making up part of this. And that would indicate enough to say a, a lead designer who's looking at this or an, a modeler who's actually going to be uh, making this if you're only a part of the pipeline. This will kind of indicate to them, okay, that's made of uh, little uh, bricks and bits of stone. Um, I could then do the same thing here. Say this was made of stonework. I could start to indicate that these are bricks. Again, you don't need to draw bricks over the entire surface, just maybe some lines and things. I could perhaps show joins where these joints are here, if there are such a thing as joins in the rock. And I can start adding details in that away. I could add it. Maybe there's a plinth that this sits in that's slightly wider than the rest of it or something like that. You start to add in little bits of detail that show that here on these slabs. It's not apparent what these are. I think they're stones is what I was kind of going for. You could maybe put a couple of cracks in there and things like that to show that this is rocks that uh, you're dealing with. Um, same thing for the hands. If this was uh, flesh, you could maybe put little bumps on it that show that it's uh, like skin. Or if it was uh, rock, made of rock, you could perhaps uh, show the, the rocks that it's made from by indicating little bits and pieces of rock on it. So there's a lot of different ways that we can go about doing indications of things without having to fully block in every single brick that you're wanting to draw here at grass. Again, I'm just using the same color brush. I could uh, indicate grass or what I could do is pick a highlight and I could indicate grass in the highlights. This is a lot easier doing this technique with a Wacom, definitely. Okay, so that is one way that we can indicate this. The dirt under here, maybe we could start, you know, indicating kind of like the bits that are being highlighted and stuff to show that looks more like soil or something like that that is uh, being underlit. And if it was big boulders or stones, you could show some of the boulders that are kind of making that up. And that completely changes the way this is read. So you can draw things again in a lighter tone or in a darker tone, and they will indicate to the viewer what it is that something is made out of, whether it's made of rock, maybe it's made of brick, maybe it's made of a, a conglomeration of different elements. So that's one way that we could go about this. Here I've painted out the details again, just to start from uh, scratch there and show you another way of indicating picture or uh, texture on your painting. So I'm gonna hide the color palette. I'm gonna make sure I name that, I should name everything color palette. And I'm also gonna hide my mood board here for the moment. I don't need that just at the moment. Okay, so I've got my image here. Now I want to indicate to a viewer what ways things are going to be textured. So to do that, I'm gonna pop back into Internet Explorer here in Chrome. And I'm going to use, let's see, if we looked up brick, for instance, and then went to images, we could find some images from Google. Now, as long as you're not completely ripping off these pictures, it doesn't matter so much about copyright as long as you're amalgamating them into your imagery in a way that they are completely unrecognizable in painting. This is used very commonly. Now, these bricks look too modern and too red for what I want. So I'm gonna look at old stonework. Old stonework there, and you see I've got some more things that look a wee bit more like the kind of thing that I'm looking for. So this well is maybe gonna be made of blocks that are, say, put together but not concreted together, something like this here. 
here's old stonework here um, I'm going to right click and copy that and then I'm going to go over into Photoshop and just control and V and then control and T to transform that I'm going to transform that down I'm just going to crop that off the parts that I need from it so I'm going to use my marquee tool M to just crop off bits that I need okay and that can in indicate to me what I'm going to be using in the well here so I'll use a brush tool with a hard round brush make it nice and small using the open bracket tool and then I can indicate with a line let's just use a white line or a black line something that's going to be seen I can click here I can shift and I can click there to draw uh, a little line so I can show where my uh, uh, inspiration is coming from in terms of the text here and then I could write or I could put text here so T is your text tool I'm just going to select black text and then I need that a lot smaller than that I can change my text over in the character box here I'm going to turn that down to size 16 and I'm just going to put uh, something like this don't work for well okay and I'll maybe bump that up a wee bit if I click in the layer I can change the text size up and then I can use V in the move tool there it'd help if I spelt right that'll be loose L O O. loose stone work for well okay so that's something that indicates to me um, the texture that I'm going to use there so I'm going to finish up here and um, doing this kind of workflow So there you have it. That is a fairly complete board of colors and textures that would anyone could work from basically to get all the information that you would need to complete this image. Now there's one final thing that we can do which will indicate the textures without us needing to have so much around the edges. You can see there, for instance, in the um, columns here, I was having difficulties fitting them in because I've got so much, so many other details in the other parts. So um, a few things, ways around that, create all your lines on a different layer, which is what I've done here. You can see the first lines I accidentally drew over my concept art, and now I can't easily remove that. I would have to select each area and try and paint over the top of it. It's a bit of a pain. Um, so create your lines in a separate layer, and you can use the U button, U on your keyboard, which is the line tool here. If you select the line tool, select pixels, and then you can draw your lines on that separate layer. It's a, a good way to keep your artwork free from lines so that we could move our artwork around even. If I grab my concept art here, I should be able to move that around without lines on it. I actually don't know what that line's connected to. Um, so that's the ideal, is that this is free of lines and I can still edit it and do what I want with it. But the third and final way that we can indicate texture is, let's take a look at some of these things quickly. If I take this, for instance, I'm going to find what layer that's on. I need to name all these layers, but I'm just going to control C to copy, control V to paste. Okay, I can move that over to here. And I can use my blending modes here that we talked about in the last video. So at the moment set to normal, you see I can set the darken or multiply or color burn, linear burn. Here's overlay. So overlays are really handy one. The soft light, they're handy ones for um, putting this over my drawing. So I'm going to go to overlay and then I can just set it over the top of the drawing. I can also use control T to change the shape of it. Hold shift and I can make it wider. Um, so what I could do there is kind of indicate the texture. There we go. Now I can select the edges of my concept art by holding control and then clicking on the thumbnail image of my concept and that will select right around the edges of the concept art. Remember you need to leave this free of the background so that there's transparent pixels around it. Then what I can do is go back up to this layer that I want to edit. Control shift and I will select the inverse of that. We'll select everything but what you have selected or you can go up to select and then inverse. Select and inverse will select everything else. Then if I press delete it will delete that from there. So I could do that and then I'm going to control D to deselect. Now that looks a bit harsh at the edges here where you can see it really obviously. So I can pull down the opacity on that and I can also blend it in by using my eraser tool E. So I'm going to use my eraser. I'm going to choose a soft round brush. I'm going to put opacity on with my pen tool here, with my, sorry, my Wacom. And I'm going to just paint around the edges and I'm going to erase out bits of that. And you see it starts fitting in and looking like it's part of the drawing. So that's introducing a more advanced concept. Um, but that's another way that you can indicate details directly onto your concept art. Concept artists don't draw every single detail on. They don't have time to do that. When they're working in the games industry, they use images and blending modes to indicate texture where you would rather not sit and draw all of those textures. So once more, I will show, I'm going to find this... Uh, layer here. I should have labeled this that has the well uh, texture on it. I'm going to scroll down until I can see it. Here we go. I'm going to control, let's see, I'm going to use M, my marquee tool, 
drag around that and control C to copy, control V to paste, or I could just duplicate the layer. And I'm going to bring that over to my well. I'm going to use control T to change the shape of it. I'm going to hold shift so that I can change it to any shape that I want. Okay, I'm going to place that right over my well. There we go. Then I'm going to go in to my find my concept art shape, control and click the concept art to select all the edges. Go back into my uh, layer, control shift I, or select an inverse selection to select everything outside of your concept art, delete. And there you go, I've got that the shape of my well. Then I can go in, I can change the opacity, the opacity on this layer, and I can also change the blending mode. So let's try overlay again there. Overlay or soft light, yeah, overlay works for me. And then I'm gonna use my eraser tool again. It's my eraser tool E. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna erase out some of the bits that I don't want, like over my grass. And this looks a wee bit harsh, so I'm gonna start erasing around the edges a wee bit and just making it look like it's part of the image again, okay? There we go. And then I'm just gonna change down the opacity a bit because it looks a bit harsh. And there we are, it kind of looks like it's part of our concept art. That's another way of indicating texture on our colored line art.